This is the K-pop cast, and in this episode, we hit you with some hit replays, including BB and Kiss of Life, and then we go through some of the latest hot K-pop news, including TXT's concert date leaked on a billboard in Oakland. We talk about sexy stuff. We talk about <laughs> wait, wait, sexy stuff from BB. Sexy stuff we talk from about BB. Kiss of Life. We talk about we talk about Wanho a little bit. Yeah, from Twenty. Uh, yeah. We talk about. From 20 being covered in body glitter. Woo! Yeah, this this is a fun one. And it's a packed house with all of your favorite guests, including Teresa, Joe, Virginia, and then two hosts from the K-pop cast fam, myself, Stephanie, and Peter. We catch up on the latest drama between the love triangle, or not, between Hedi, Ryu Junior, and Han So Hee, all actors. And we also give you more reasons to blacklist us. Blacklist us from, like, getting invited to, like, press events and liking the show. So stay tuned for all those things. Including criticism of a BTS member's latest solos. Yeah, see, we're just, we're just deliberately trying to create all the enemies with, with, with the K-pop fandom. All right, but before we get into those topics, don't forget to join the K-pop listener fam on Slack. Link to that is in the episode description. And now for some hit replays. All right. I'm DJ Peter Lowe. I'm Virginia. And I'm Teresa. And I'm your host, Stephanie. And hit replays are our K-pop song recommendations. All right, Virginia, you're kicking us off. What's your hit replay? All right, my hit replay is BB's uh, Sugar Rush. Uh, it's a song about a woman rejecting unwanted advances and being fine on her own. Uh, the tight rapping over sparse beats is both catchy and fucking hilarious. Um, and the MV is Visual Eye Candy starring BB uh, So Yun of G Idol and Yena, formerly of Is One. Jun Soyeon. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you sorry. Cool us on pronunciation, <laughs> Peter? I, we, and what I else like can you say? For, uh, that, that's it. That is the extent. You've, you've heard it all. <laughs> You're, no, <laughs> Peter's taking over for all pronunciation from now on. Is no. it really soy, not so? No, no. I, yeah, I, it's, I'm it's wrong. So, so. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, but. yeah it anyway. is so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Virginia. Tell us about them. So BB is a South Korean singer, rapper, songwriter, and actress. She first appeared on the show The Fan in 2018 and was runner up. Uh, I can't decide if she's classified as K-Indie or K-R-N-B, K-Hop, uh, maybe both. Uh, she's got a super quirky vibe and has just awesome visuals and MVs and music. She released her first studio album in 2022 and is known for her acting roles like the film Hopeless and TV show The Worst of Evil, both uh, from 2023. She's under Feel Good Music and 88 Rising. And and she's a frequent subject of, of discourse in this podcast because we would talk about her all the time. We've talked about all of her singles to date. And um, to your point on her acting roles, she embodies the personas of her characters so well in her music videos. Okay, so the reason why... <laughs> yes. I, I, just, I love her so much. I, I love her so much. Uh, the reason why it's a hit replay, mostly it's the lyrics. Um, I mean, the song sounds cool. It's uh, it's really sparse. It's a sparse hip hop beat and it's really chill. So if you heard the like first 30 seconds, you've heard the whole fucking song. But it's the lyrics and it's all in English. So I can appreciate it way more. But like, for example, <laughs> yeah, I got cake, baby. Yeah, I got dough. Bet you never had a bitch who had both. Oh, I, I just like died laughing. Drop the mic. Right. But my favorite line is, I don't need a man for no dessert. I got popsicles in my freezer. <gasps> got 31 flavors. No free samples, boy. You got to pay first. Make bread. But I ain't no baker. Good girl on her worst behavior. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Does she fucking say she doesn't need a man because she's got dildos? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that really what, what, what what's being implied here by the lyrics? I got popsicles in my freezer. Like, what else? Is, what? I mean, I am going to say that that lyric definitely stood out to me as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what's going on here? Hey, if there's anyone who can do it, she, she's been talking overtly about sex, like from the beginning, which is one reason why we love her here on the K yes. podcast. She's just out with it. Yeah, I have sex. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can't fuck me, but too bad. Mm hmm. Yeah, when this song first came out, I put it in the Slack, like asking y'all, like, what what do you think this song is about? Because I was struggling to understand, and um, I came to the realization uh-huh. uh, that this song is about sex, probably. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, it's not just about sex, though. It's saying it's it's talking about like how she's great and mm. maybe. And she's great at sex and she doesn't need you for sex, but it's also mostly like, you wish you could have me, but I don't want you. And I don't want you pulling up, hollering at me, right? Like She doesn't mm-hmm. need you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what, what is the first line, lyric, first lyric on, on the cake? What, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Explain it like I'm five. Okay. She's got cake, baby. Yeah. So cake, isn't it usually an ass? Booty number one, booty number two. Right. I got dough. Dough, I think she means money. Yep. So she's saying she's got a fat ass and she's got money. I bet she didn't think you'd, you've never had a girl who had both, right? I so see. It's usually one or the other. Yeah, that's, that's usually just how it works exclusive in this world. of elements. Okay. Mm-hmm. Usually if you've got money, you're a skinny mini, you know, flat ironing board. You know? um, <laughs> I was going to say that musically... Musically, I really enjoyed this. And mm. since it came out so close to Chung Ah's Eeny Meeny, I couldn't uh, help but draw the comparison there and think like, ah, oh, this is what Eeny Meeny was probably going for musically, Ooh. but it didn't quite get there. That's my take. That's so interesting because I also like Eeny Meeny, but ah, okay, not yeah. as much as this, not yeah. as much as Sugar Rush. There's, there's something, yeah, this has that, that, mm, that X factor in the music. Hmm. Maybe it's just a little bit faster. I don't know. I'll have to really like listen to both of them side by side. I think this one's at 156. Mm, okay. Oh, I could hang on. Resident at least DJ. That's what I think I read. Okay, so Sugar Rush is around 112 beats per minute and Eeny Meeny is around 103 beats per minute. So I oh, I think I win. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's well, all about winning, uh, honestly. It's funny, like, you know, G Idol's wife feels like a slower song, but it's still like 125 beats mm. per minute, for example. Like, you know, there, there's different ways you can cut it, but um, in terms of, sort of the percussive style, that makes it feel faster or slower. Mm. Yeah, percussive but, style, yeah. yeah. I don't know where I got 156. Sorry, it might have been another song I was looking at. <laughs> Maybe Sugar Rush by TXT. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's song that, that song so is, is around that range, yeah. Love that song. Yeah, I like that the song uh, featured uh, Jen Soyeon, but like I, I don't know. I wish there was more. Like, it's nice seeing Yana and Jen Soyeon, but like you know, it would be nice if they did ad libs or something on oh. it. Yeah, what a waste. Yeah, I was a little confused when I saw them in the MV. I mean, I love seeing their faces, but I was kind of like, oh, is there going to be something more? You know, and yeah. Oh, isn't it just to get you know clicks of their fans? Right? I mean, like, I understand the rationale behind it. I'm just saying as like a fan, I would have... Ah, uh, that makes sense. You know, they're already coming for the MV. <laughs> right, like like how many more Might steps well. is involved, right? To actually get, them get into their the voices. Studio. Yeah. Like yeah. usually you'll have people collab on the song and, you know, and send their track over and they're not even recording in the same place. And then, but or getting them together for the, the MV is like, sorry? Or sometimes they're not even in the video at all. Exactly. So like getting them together for the MV is usually the bigger hurdle. <laughs> you yeah. know? Maybe she wanted to pull an IU. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? Like it just feature V in the MV, right? Mm. He's not on the song. Without the voice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a power move, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's like I did sense. see some people saying that in the comments on YouTube mm-hmm. just like oh like iconic like such a power move just yeah. like show your faces and that's enough uh-huh. and I was kind of like oh I mean I'm of a different mindset but 
Okay, let's move on. Teresa, what's your hit replay? Yeah, so my hit replay for this episode is Kiss of Life, Nobody Knows. Um, It's a sultry throwback R&B track uh, from a girl group that debuted in 2023. Um, And it's just like, I don't know, it gives me big, like major TLC vibes. Um, And it's simple, it's stripped down, it's not trying to be too much. And it has a nice mature song that I'm loving right now. Kiss of Life is a four-member South Korean girl group, obviously, under S2 Entertainment. Um, the members right now consist of Julie, I believe it's Natty, Belle, and Hanul. Um, and like I said, they debuted last year on July 5th with their first mini album, Kiss of Life. The name itself is like a reference to the mouth-to-mouth artificial respiration method. (laughs) So like the name, uh, the group says that we plan on revitalizing and bringing fresh life to the K-pop scene. I remember when they first debuted last year because they popped up on like my Spotify playlist and immediately like I I grew up like prior to being a K-pop person like majorly into R&B. So just the fact that they were leaning heavily in this direction really caught my attention right away. And I've really followed their stuff. And I think that it's really interesting to see a group debut with members that are, first of all, none of them were minors, which is really nice. I think, you know, there's been a lot of conversation over, you know, in recent years, especially last year. And with like new genes about like uh, the role of minors in, in girl groups and what have you. I will say their youngest member, I believe, debuted when she was 18, but I think their ages range up until I think like about 26, um, which is really interesting. And I think it allows them to, you can see, I think the, just, I don't know, they they really lean into having a much more, quote unquote, I guess, mature uh, persona on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not afraid to lean into the heavy, like sensual nature of like, the R&B tracks that they um, have. And for Nobody Knows, I really also love the music video because yes. it's like a K-drama mm-hmm. series, like just in an MV. You know, they start out, they're in high school, there's bullying. You know, one of the girls is like on a train, some guys like trying to, you know, invade her personal space. She kicks his ass. You know, the other members are standing up for the people that are being bullied. They have this whole revenge plot in the MV against the family of the students that are bullying them. You know, they're just like, F the whole system, you know? And it's, I don't know, it's like really nice to, like I'm trying really hard to think of another K-pop group right now that would throw in all of these um hot button, I guess, societal issues in a single MV and do it in a way that's like, oh, like there's a real story here. Like it, it just, it legit seems like it could be a K-drama, the, just the MV alone. So highly, highly recommend. Yeah, I enjoyed the music video as well. Really cathartic to see mm. all those like people in power get it handed to them. They're just desserts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm also really excited because they announced last week that they're having a new album uh, release uh, in just like a few weeks. So April 3rd called Midas Ooh. Touch. So I'm really, really looking forward to see what the girls release. Um, and one of the members, Natty, I believe, I, I believe I'm pronouncing her name correctly. So Natty also had like a breakout solo track last year. Um, which was popular, by the way. Which, which was, was super which was, popular. Yeah. And I think it was like replay. a surprise. Um, and it, I don't know, it's just like, it's, again, I'm trying to think of like debut group, girl groups that right off the bat have the solo members releasing solo tracks and then being received really, really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you talked about this. I, I didn't even realize there was a music video. Of course there was a music video, but like what this song was popular for was it's... Um, how can I come off as not being creepy? Like, uh, <laughs> like it, it's very sexually grinding choreography. Um, so 
I, I feel like I'm like you talking about all the legitimate reasons to like this song. Like I'm, I'm the guy <laughs> getting kicked in the crotch on the subway for like, yeah. okay, go to, go to jail, Peter. But yeah, it, it's a really <laughs> good song. Like I, I unfortunately like it, while it's like wildly popular on TikTok, I haven't seen it translate to that same popularity in in the club. Um, like I'll play it, and then like a couple of people will dance to it, but it doesn't really get people growing. Like maybe other popular songs. And same thing like Vivi's is uh, Maniac, another butt song. Um, <laughs> another butt song. I wonder what is the BPM of this song. It's on the slower <laughs> side, right? I was about to say that, like, I don't know. I, I feel don't know like if there I was, was, yeah. There's certain K pop songs like this that, including Maniac, but that it's, I think, at least our repeats on my playlist. And, you know, I see them on TikTok, on Instagram, and whatnot. But they're not they're not meant to be like, I don't know, they're not like clubby songs in my mind. You know, I feel like when people go, well, you, you're the expert here, Peter, but I think it's just you're expecting something different when you go to a K-pop dance night, club night. I mean, it, it could be just like who I'm playing to, which is like one, Gaysians and two, straight <laughs> girls. <laughs> so I, I don't know if like straight hetero girls are as into it. I don't, I don't know. Like... I don't know. I, I've definitely yes. seen like gay I, dance teams right. dance to Kiss of Life really well. Um, but, but go ahead. Sorry, sorry. sorry I was going to say this this song. I I would love to sing this at Norebang and like get up on the couch and get the my friends going. You know, trying to hit those notes Ooh. and also like belt it out in the car. Or like at a chill, like house gathering, house party kind of thing to have it going. Because it is, it has that 2000s R&B character to it. So not necessarily club, but I still want to hear it in the social settings. And you know what it is? It's not just the visuals, you know? It's like, I feel like we we keep hearing like in K-pop, oh my God, and, and music more broadly, they just like... Oh, Y2K, like, and it's this reimagined, repackaged, <laughs> you know, imagined, I don't know, all parallel universe version of what Y2K was, <laughs> looked like. And we see that very much so in the concepts and the visuals for groups, but not necessarily exactly the sound. And this group in the Kiss of Life and this, these songs are very much leaning into the sound itself. Uh-huh. No, I'm so glad you mentioned it because when I've when the first maybe two bars started, I was like, "Is this a Brandy song?" Because mm. right, don't you just feel like yeah. oh, like I could mix it into one of these playlists that I already have from like years and years ago, and it'll fit right in. Yeah, I feel like it reminds me of Best Friend and I Want to Be Down. Yes, mm, I want to be down is I one be of my all time faves. So it makes sense why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you have good taste. So yeah, there, there's songs like. Uh, New Jeans, Attention, um, New Jeans, Hype Boy that are lower vibe, but people still get turned up to, even though they don't have like a, a clubby beat or feeling. Um, so I, I that, those that's are for, faster and have more dance beat. No, but elements. they're but they're not faster. They are like around the same like ninety two beats per minute. Oh. Is it because of the dance, like the viral dances? Well, but but see, Kiss of Life has a viral dance. I would argue an even what more viral dance. What was that phrase dance. you used? The percussive style? <laughs> what was that? Well, like, you know, like for, for Jesse's Zoom, Jesse's Zoom, for example, that, mm-hmm. that's at the same BPM, but it has a hip hop style beat. Yeah. But I would look at attention. I, that's I mean, I get what you're saying beat. in terms of this, like a song like Attention to Me, Overall, yes, it's relatively slower compared to other K-pop songs, but within the genre of oh, but R&B, it's not, technically, it's not slower. It's a but, little faster, technically speaking. Okay, <laughs> all this is relative. Within R&B, though, it's like the drawn-out vocals that make things sultry. You know, so like on this song, it's like, you know, let's get this party. I can't sing at all, guys. So I'm not even going to attempt, Ooh, but just like the it. lyrics, like, <laughs> let's get this party started. No, I, even if I'm drunk, you won't hear me singing. Um, <laughs> just like, <laughs> so Challenge fast. accepted. Um, but just like the lyrics here, like they really like draw out the vocals. And we don't often hear that. Like, I don't know, it's like, it's like a drawl. Like it's not, I don't know. 
I don't I don't put it in the same category as like attention. Or no. sister is my boy, for example. Like that that's another song that that's slower. I think chill. that's closer, but I don't consider that mm, I think there that's a closer. I think that's in the same universe. And people will do their body rolls to that song. <laughs> Are you just complaining about not seeing enough body rolls in the club? I, I'm seeing, I guess I'm complaining about not seeing enough like booty grinding from um, mm-hmm. uh, Kiss of Life, Nobody Knows. Yeah. Justice for Kiss of Life, Nobody Knows. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, we Should promise, we we promise yeah. to personally help with that. All of us on this call pledge to... Yeah, I'll give you a free pass. Move the needle on that. Okay. To, to, my, to my gigs, if you guys will do it. Okay. All right. Great. All right. All right. So, uh, welcoming Joe to the episode. Joe, welcome. Um, hey. So, Joe, tell us about your hit replay. My hit replay is um, well, one thing for certain and two things for sure about this man. Uh, to give a shout out to Jason, uh, he is very much a Jobad uh, Yesuka. Yesuka. Um, he's very much underrated. He's making a name for himself as an artist with a unique sound and vision. It's from 20 with the sexy track Demon. You got me to groove, I see you smile, but we have been seen on the fire. People here with siren. Smell out the perfume, so bad, but you are drilled by bad desire. I'll take your wire, why call me Demon? So From 20 is a singer-songwriter, visual director, and founder of the indie label Way Better, formerly known as the Faker Club, uh, which changed its name January 1st of this year. Uh, From 20 started his career in 2012 as Ray Juan of Big Star, for Chicago listeners, no, not that gentrified taco spot on the north side. <laughs> um, <laughs> they were a boy group that launched and languished, like many others, under Brave Sound. Um, in 2017, he and his three bandmates participated in the ill-fated relaunch, idol relaunch series, The Unit, where he met his eventual co-founder, uh, co-writer, and label mate, Hello Bloom, uh, where soon after he was eliminated, he entered the military. Um, in 2021, he and Hello Bloom it started their independent label, The Faker Club, and he released his self-titled debut EP uh, from 20. So the reason why this is a hit replay is that it soars, demon roars into the 80s inspired synth pop that has become from 20's trademark. Similar to Moon Jung Up's XOX, it takes audiovisual inspiration from Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson School. In this case, the way you make me feel with nods to Rain and Usher in the breakdown in that bridge. Even though the song is short, it has a pretty effective bridge. Um, and so from the music of this, uh, the musical arrangement of this song and the visual from 20 is truly given Lucifer because um, my favorite things about this track are the 3C <laughs> leading lady, body glitter, and the themes of dark romance. Um, so his love interest in the video... Club 3C in the video. Right. <laughs> um, his love interest, a model uh, by the name of Camille, is not your typical foreign K-pop love interest. Um, like when she first came on the screen, I was just like, oh, she pineapples her hair at night. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> so at, per From 20, the seductive nature of the lyrics and visual are inspired by two of the biggest erotic dramas in Korea and the West. Uh, he said his inspiration was The Handmaiden and <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, oh two movies God. that he really likes. Um, the song is about being attracted to someone who is irresistible, but not good for you. And From 20 is definitely on the short list uh, of people that I would let ruin my credit. <laughs> um, he's no stranger to camp. <laughs> he's no stranger to campy yet sensual themes. Both he and Hello Gloom have said that they wanted to start a label of attractive men. 
And they also gave their ideal choices. They've also said that they purposely wanted to make music and videos that aggressively highlight the sexiness and moodiness of their artists. Um, this is the fourth English track that he's put out. And his, his English tracks have been among my favorites uh, as of late. And from what I know, both he and Hello Gloom are translating it on their own, but it doesn't come across as what some call bad English, but it was also not without struggle to get this video out. There was some lost footage uh, and <laughs> there was more like of From 20 Covered and Body Glitter that we probably didn't get to see. Um, <laughs> And just from what I learned in the behind the scenes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my hit replay this week. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I hadn't, hadn't really been checking for this artist, but I did used to listen to Big Star <laughs> back in the <laughs> way back. Wow. So yeah, it's refreshing to see, you know, someone from that that far back still going. This this was fun. It was creative, production value high. I liked it. Yeah, I really liked the video. Um, yeah. And yeah, then the, the video like, was fun. Yeah. And then the, like the synth pop vibes I felt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I really liked the bass. It was really, I enjoyed it. It's got that groovy, funky feel on the bass mm -hmm. line. Yeah. The abs help too. Right. The abs <laughs> and the wings. <laughs> and like, I mean, yeah, shout out to um, Syed, Eric, and Michael <laughs> from the K-pop select. Like, uh, K-pop casts, like, because we all, <laughs> that was one of several reasons why um, we all became fans <laughs> of, 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 <laughs> of the abs. Yes, because um, this past summer, he dropped a song called Bad Revenge. Um, and all oh. of his videos and music is based in 80s synth pop for the last two, three singles he's put out. And Bad Revenge was playing off of Terminator. So the video starts oh. off like the Terminator movie does, you know, like when Arnold Schwarzenegger um, <laughs> time travels and shows up in the past <laughs> naked. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, he's kind of had my attention since then. Well, I can never fault anyone for appreciating a good set of ads. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, let's move on. So last but not least, Stephanie. Give us your hit replay. All right. So I discovered my hit replay probably yesterday, <laughs> as I often wait until the last minute and catch up on weeks and weeks of K-pop. But hey, that's kind of a fun ritual, actually. I'm on my couch and I'm breezing through everything that has come out. And this song caught my ear. It is No Regret by Polyflower, featuring Eilip and Gina. I don't know what you think, baby Cause I got no regrets There's no reason for going back, yeah I don't know what you think, baby Cause I got no regrets, go away So this track and all, all of the artists in it are I, in my, fr from my perspective like deep indie <laughs> uh, underground Korean R&B artists. I had not really heard, heard of any of them and I had a little bit of a hard time finding out who they are and like who they're associated with. I could still use you know, help researching them. But anyways, the artist, main rapper Kali Flower with a space in between the two parts of the word. You know, I just really, I appreciate I just want to stop and pause and say I appreciate in the era of problematic K rapper names like Chio Chicano. Oh, yes. That this wholesome. <laughs> All right, this is kind of a um, you know foreshadowing to a discussion happening later in the episode. But I just appreciate that he was like, I'm going to be a vegetable and I'm going to rap. <laughs> so... Cauliflower is a solo R&B artist who debuted last year, September 2023. Um, the song also features I Lip, who debuted in 2020 and has uh, a few more tracks than Cauliflower does, uh, with you know, 
featuring artists like Wavy Cake and Entoy. And then finally, the lady on the track, Gina, debuted in 2020 as an R&B singer, and she has a, a lot of song credits to her name. Um, I was trying to look around for like who produced this, who wrote this, and it looks like the the singers on the track actually uh, composed the song, wrote the lyrics, wow. and um, I saw tagged as a sound mastering studio on the video, uh, Kwon Nam Mu and 821 Sound Mastering, and that's a studio that has done hits like uh, Taeyeon, INVU, Crush Him Cheat, and a song from IU. Um, so they have some connections to folks in high places, but they they seem pretty indie, which which is cool. That's refreshing when I find uh, a gem like that. And then I would say I I had a few hit replay candidates, but this R and B track really like went over the edge for me when I heard it in the car. Mm-hmm. When I could really get that bass going i could really hear that lower level and it hits Mm -hmm. at just the right time that combined with the little like chris brown style falsetto in the hook Mm -hmm. that was just like hook line and sinker for me just like well done high quality sticks in my head forever yeah it's it's really low on the bassy range, but there's a lot of space in the mix for their vocals to like echo and reverberate out. To mm, feel the that reverb, edges. yeah, yes. All yeah, I have yeah, in I was, my notes. Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say I was I was like rolling down the streets of West Oakland, leaning back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say how the only thing I have in my notes is yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next to R&B, but it was just, yes. Uh-huh, yep. Stephanie, I'm really impressed by your research skills on this. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I forgot my bank rounding number. Like, can you help me find that information? <laughs> oh, sure, I got you. <laughs> 215 <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, just share that for all the listeners. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. Oh, and another uh, fun fact I learned in my internet I, uh, sleuthing around these artists <laughs> is that the music video was uh, produced and shot by the girlfriend of the main artist, Cauliflower. Oh, and her name wow. is Ochaden. O- oh, I was going to ask if her name was Florette. <laughs> it should be. No, she is Broccoli. <laughs> I wonder if she has a cute nickname like that. I don't know. But yeah, they, they look cute together. They post on IG and tag each other. But yeah, they, they, they work together and are involved in other ways. Which That's is so cute. Awesome. Yeah, love that. I love that you're curating underground. Yeah, air quotes. Like I, I don't know what counts for underground, but like this is like really you know under the radar mm-hmm. uh, gem. So thank you, Stephanie. Okay, uh, moving along. So we, every week we talk about what songs are trending with 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 dancers. So I'll just run through that list really fast here. Uh, by the way, number eleven on the list was P1 Harmony killing it. So they're oh. they're, they're coming up. Hey. Number ten is Nmix Dash. Number nine, La Seraphim Perfect Night. They were up for so long, so high, but it's starting to come down. Number eight, we've got Baby Monster Batter up. Number seven, TWS. Plot twist. Who? The uh, the new the new uh, high boy group. Oh wow. What? Wait wait no what what no, oh, they're, no they're not high. Who are they? Pletus. <laughs> the immediate what? Pletus. 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 Which is under. Oh, I guess that's high, technically high. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But yeah. Dang, I miss them. I better catch up. I definitely had a few people request their songs, so it's not like they're coming out of nowhere. Like I, they're they're definitely popular, or at least here in the Bay Area. All right, so number or, or uh, number six. Wait, wait is, what's the song? What's the TWS song? Plot twist. Oh, popular. plot twist. Plot twist. Oh. Okay. Plot twist. And I think, like, wait, am I getting this right? Is TWS like an all English? No, no, they're not. No, this song has Korean. Never mind. Um, okay, so then number six, we've got uh, Twice uh, and their song One Spark about UTIs and STD. Okay. And then number five, we got G Idol Super Lady, the one that um, gays in the club will get into fights over because I want to sing the chorus of the song. And then number four, <laughs> we've got Espa Drama, still up there. Number drama, three, mama. 
That yeah. song's so good, though. <laughs> it is good. I got in trouble for not playing it. I, I don't. I don't know what what convinced me. I it was okay to not play that song at a. I don't know. At, at a gig I had you recently. Get it together. Yeah, that, actually, there was a Instagram reel of people complaining about me not playing just that <gasps> song. <laughs> A reel? Not even, oh no. No, there's like 6,000 likes on that reel. So it's like, it's not like a small reel. It's like, DJ Peter Lowe did not play Espadrama. Like, anyway, uh, number three, uh, it's the Untouchable. And, Ooh. Okay, you want to guess what number, you can probably guess what number one and number two are. I, I'm going to guess that Stephanie is going to know what number one and number two are. Uh, La Seraphim. No? I. Uh, I, say the say the songs by La Seraphim. Ooh, easy and smata. Yeah. Okay. And then what was what, 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 what? Which one What's is the order? Yeah. Number two. I I, I trust gonna, you can get it. All right. I know I'm, you got it. I'm gonna go with easy on top. Number one. You are correct. You got it, oh, Stephanie. Oh yes. I knew you I am get on it. a roll. <laughs> I am the winner of this episode. You are 100. <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent as I need to go play the lottery. This. I've been so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for K-pop dances. Um, up next onto hot issue, how you think. Teresa, what, what's on your mind in, in K-pop? What's making you want to gush or share or talk about and what, what's, what's going on in K-pop? What did you do this weekend? Oh, okay. Am I going out of order? Because what I do? No, is- no, you can do whatever, whatever you want, <laughs> Teresa. Uh, well, it seems that every time that I come on the show, I find a way to talk about fashion and K-pop. <laughs> um, so I guess it's become like my unofficial beat. But basically, I have been thinking that the next update here on the ever-growing um, crossover between luxury fashion and K-pop is that we had Felix walk the runway for Louis Vuitton and help essentially close out the global month, uh, global fashion month. Um, It's a major, major, I mean, depending, depending on who you ask, like how this qualifies as a first is, you know, it depends on who you ask because there have been other um, K-pop idols who've walked runways before. So we had Jeno from NCT Dream who walked for Peter Doe previously. Um, we also had Shonu uh, this year walk as part of Concept Korea in New York Fashion Week. But Felix is the first brand ambassador to walk for a luxury fashion house. Um, and Louis Vuitton, like, I don't know, like, you don't really get, I mean, that's a major, major brand. Um, And he was reportedly personally reached out to by um, the artistic director of Louis Vuitton. And it's so funny because I saw a clip about, like, how he found out about it. So I guess, like, Felix is talking to the camera and he's just like, I was, like, getting ready to, like, board the plane. And then they just told me, so guess, so it looks like you're walking the runway for Louis Vuitton. And then Felix is just kind of like, so I guess I'm walking the <laughs> runway for Louis Vuitton. And it, I was just like, wow, these poor, you know, K-pop bottles really are just like thrust, you know, have these incredible opportunities just like casually <laughs> mentioned to them. Um, anyways, him, I see blonde hair. I think he did a great job. Um, and uh, I have a feeling it's going to kick off a lot more K-pop idols walking the runway. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens there. I wonder if it's just going to be the taller ones. Well, Felix is not tall. Mm-hmm. Oh, at that's all. true. But he seems at tall. All. He is he tiny. Tall, though. He is, is he really? tiny. He is a tiny man. <laughs> His proportions, however, visually help are like, he doesn't have mm-hmm. stocky proportions at all. Got so it. he is just like literally sized down in a way that a lot of K-pop idols are. So mm-hmm. he photographs really well, but by no means is he anywhere near, I don't think, like, what is he, five? Is he even five, eight? I don't know, you know? Oh, um, well, he's, I he's, a small he's tall guy. then. If he's that, like for <laughs> modeling, that's oh, yeah, tiny. No, not modeling tall. For men, mm. absolutely small. Like, I don't even... Yeah, it's not a thing. But ter- Teresa, like, does height really matter unless you're doing runway? It does. Oh, it does for commercial? Yeah, because and- so a lot of, so the thing is that a lot of, you have sample sizes. And uh, sa- does everybody here know I what? See. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, 
So for even editorial shoots, which we have less and less of these days, which is actually one of my things that I really do not like. Um, but even if you have an editorial photo shoot, like you're working with sample sizes. So you oh. don't have, you want to cast the models who are going to be able to wear those sample sizes, you know? Otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of pinning, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, the clothing and that risks you maybe potentially doing like damaging the actual sample itself. You know, it's like for commercial editorial shoots, like I remember Tina Fey, right? She, in her memoir, she has this funny story about her doing her first um, uh, cover and how she's like, wow, I look so great and glamorous. And then there's like these huge binder clips behind me. <laughs> that yeah, are like like a Saurus of clips, know, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, to make the clothes fit. You know, she's like, so I can't even turn. And that's because she's not a sample size, you know, so they probably had to get Limits something. and the then, creativity of the exactly. shoot and not the vision of the designer or whatnot. No, yeah. but also notable here, Felix closed the show. So he wasn't just like thrown in there. Mm. It's a pretty big deal to have him close. Yeah, it is. <laughs> huh? Oh, I was just agreeing it, that it, it is a big deal because that's usually when the big show pieces come mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And in so this case, not... Felix is the show. <laughs> Felix exactly. is the show piece. Exactly. And they released, you know, they're really leaning into it, Louis Vuitton, it really leaning into him as a brand ambassador, because like there's videos of him talking with Nicolas Gasquier about like whose name I'm absolutely butchering because I, I cannot pronounce French. Um, but like there's videos of the two of them talking and him showing him the clothes like it's not, you know, they're really milking it. Oh, that's great, though. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's exciting. I think it's cool because also like not a big guy. So <laughs> maybe the spins are going to be open to a little, we're going to get maybe a little bit more diversity on the runways. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's uh, quickly move on to the, the second item, Teresa. Yeah. So twice in Vegas, I saw them this weekend. <gasps> yeah. Um, I Ooh. love them. I did not get to catch them uh, last year during their last tour. Um, the First time that I saw Twice was at the Forum in LA, which was a wonderful, wonderful show. Um, so I was really excited to see them at a stadium in Vegas. And it was also the, well, not the first time, but they also had Vicha open for them. Mm. Um, I will admit here that I did not see Vicha. <laughs> I was really busy having a michelada during that time. And my nieces did see them. And I actually saw that they were running really late for the show. Oh, no. So what ended up happening is, and I haven't been able to find this on the internet, guys, and I'm absolutely not on Twitter. So if somebody has more information, please do correct me. But my understanding is the show started late because like I would say at least 15 minutes late or 20. And we all know that like K-pop shows are really, really punctual. Mm -hmm. um, so what ended up happening was they cut Ah. seemingly Vicha's set. Oh, so sad. not entirely, but they did cut it down. Um, so I was also kind of thinking, I was like, oh, I'll have a michelada and then I'll catch maybe like a song or two <laughs> Vicha. Oh. And then it was like, oh no, switch up. And then everybody, you know, um, let's get ready for twice. And my understanding is I have it on good source that it's because the rehearsals ran late for whatever reason. Oh. Um, and they wanted to, you know, it costs a lot of money if the shows run late, because then you have oh, to pay right. for extra staffing mm -hmm. and all of that. So either way, Twice was great. Um, they had a live band. They performed oh. like a medley of major hits, um, which honestly made me realize just how many, like, I love Twice, but, like, it made me think about the limitations that a K-pop group that's been around for as long as they have and has as many hits as they have, like, what limitations they have to work with when creating a set list that has to include that stuff, you know, all of their songs. Yeah. So, and how that impacts, like, the fan experience. So I took, I went with... um two of my nieces and like another family member who 
um, was, you know, came in from Mexico for the show and it was her first K-pop experience. And I was really, really like curious, like what her perception of it all was. And she was like, you know, I really like noticed how friendly K-pop fans are in general. And like, it's so nice, the fan culture, and like they're talking to fans and whatnot. And I actually realized, I was like, there was less fan interaction overall because there's less time, yeah. you know, for the members to really actually be interacting with the fans. And that actually kind of made me a little bit sad because that's the kind of stuff that I personally remember the most from when I first saw them at the forum in LA. Mm. You know? It's interesting. I So I saw another popular concert here in the Bay Area, I've, this last weekend. Um, and it's funny, like a lot of Bay Area K-pop fans are going to both your concert, Teresa, uh, in, in Las Vegas and, and here in Oakland. And my big issue with Ive is that like there was way too much like talking, stupid VCR stuff for them to go change costumes. <laughs> like I could have used a lot more music. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking like this is not Twice. I could have used like more of a, like a Twice production where like they're keeping the music rolling. They've got segues in between songs where they're blending B sides and other popular hits. Uh, they keep make it a big theatrical production. Um, and I was not getting that from from Ive. I mean, I know a lot of fans liked it, but it's it's not twice. You know, it. So I saw your comment about that on the Slack, and I'm glad that you bring it up here because I did really love the medley of songs. I thought they did a really good job, and it was like a surprising twist for you know, just like Dance the Night Away and Fancy and whatnot, and then like the live band. Personally, though, I think and. Ugh, their more recent songs, um, their most recent album, I think is like not as strong as some of their prior hits. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they, you know, ate up into their set time because they had to include those newer tracks, you know, that aren't as like big hits. It's like, oh, if even just like 10 minutes, you know, just like 10 minutes, like if you had removed <laughs> two three songs of like the newer ones that aren't as I think um, popular overall, it would have been great. It would have been like 10 yeah. out of 10 for me. So it's not that I want, I know what you're talking about. Like I've been to other smaller K-pop shows where it's like, okay, wow, this is really just like a meet. Like it's not a meet and greet, but it's it's like a- yeah, yeah. yeah. Too, much, too much fan interaction without exactly. substance. Yeah, okay. So I'm curious if they like- they're obviously big enough to sell out. Like, why did they have, why did they have each other? Is it just solely to promote each oh, other? Oh so, man, man, I've been wanting more, oh. more prom, like openers. Like K-pop sorely needs it. But they're I don't so think big, so. though. They're Actually, so, you know what I mean? Like they're so because Peter. like I'd be pissed if BTS had an opener because I. I want that full two and a half hour set. They 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 have that. No, 25, so they didn't you know? cut. Vicha did not cut into Twice's set, like in the original. So the no, but show, what I mean is, if they didn't have them, then they no, could have had so it the doesn't, whole time. It doesn't factor in. So that's what I mean. So the show was starting at seven seven thirty, mm -hmm. um, just twice. And it ends at, oh. at, at 10. So that's a three hour show. Oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Vicha was there supposed to start at 6.30. Oh, that's right. early. Yeah. Exactly. So instead of put, cutting into, to your point, instead of cutting into twice a set, they had Vicha open much earlier in the day. Got but they ended up it. starting late around 6.45. And then, uh. you know, my production brain kicks in here, guys. So then, it's, then it just pushes things along and messes things up. Right. Um, so another fun... So to your to answer your question about Vicha, why have them? Peter says like, yes, we need more opening acts. Yes and no. I think it can work if you have it earlier in the day. But honestly, Peter, having gone to this, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work necessarily. I think it's going to be like really, really hard because so much, and I was talking to my brother about this, um, the merch lines are outside the venue. Oh, they oh you were at Allegiant, right? <laughs> yes, I was at Allegiant mm -hmm. Stadium. And that's typically what happens at a stadium, K-pop uh, companies will have the merch lines outside the venue because they know that 9 a.m. somebody's going to be out there, you know, waiting in line for merch. Like there are aerial shots at noon 
of just the thousands of people <laughs> like wrapped around outside the stadium to get twice merch, you know? So they're spending their entire day outside getting merch, doing other things. And then as it gets closer to, to start time, they start coming into the venue. So the venue doesn't make any money because these people are coming in, clo- basically coming in as soon as the show's going to start. And then they're staying seated for the three hour show, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I, I was really fast though. Like they, they had like multiple venues for sell merch. So actually merch was re- really quickly accessible uh, for those last week. And so especially fans weren't waiting for hours. And there was like so much dead air in the beginning. And they were playing through the entire discography while people are waiting around. Like that's a perfect time for an open interact. They could have used like, you know, other artists to perform while they're just like talking like, how are you, you know, uh, <laughs> fans? And like, I, I, I like you fans. Fandom is great. You know, like I'll name all your cliches. And like they're doing it to fill dead air um, while they do a costume change or something. It was just like, it killed me. Like I, I could have used a lot more like programming from like a, a warm up act or other like people to alternate on the stage to keep things moving. So. I, I I respectfully disagree. Maybe Teresa, like I, I think twice they they've got the production where they can once that once their section section begins and there's enough members that they can keep it rolling. But in other venues, like I, I could see like a an opener at complimenting more, um, and uh, and 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 venues yeah. doing a better job of getting people in and out faster. Well, it's not even so much. I mean, it's not even so much the venue. It's just the fan culture, really. You know, that people are hanging out outside. Like it's not, anyways, that's a a minor point. My highlight, my last highlight here, and I'm sorry to take up so much time here is I did see twice at the store after the concert. Um, The day after they were at the M&M store and I saw Mina, uh, Jihyo and Jonghyun. So super fun. And security. Did you say hi? Um, their security guard was giving me a death stare Aww. for the longest time. And I really was like, oh, I, they do come out in videos, like in the background that I have where I'm like just filming, <laughs> like, like the store. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, right. Oh, that's right. Filming the store, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't see them. What? That was the, that was a thing. So no, they're so small. They're so oh, tiny. I bet. They're so tiny, you know, and they're like all incognito, um, just like with glasses, you know, and like tennis shoes and like hoodies, you know? But I once I did see them, I was like, oh my God, I can't get close. And like, I know that that security guard's already eyeing us like as a group, you know? So they were come, going down the escalator and I was like across from the escalator on the floor. And I was like, I'll just like see as they're going down the escalator, if I can like wave to them or something. And the security guard saw us and then my um, cousin had like her phone in her hand and he just like kept looking at her. And then she, I think just, she, she's not like a, she's not a once, you know, like this was her first K-pop show. So she just takes out her phone and I think she was going to scroll through something. And he's just like, no, 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 no pictures. And poor Jihyo, oh. I just see like looks up and like I make eye contact with her and I just like managed to wait, make a wave. And then that was it. They disappeared oh. under the floor and I was like, no. <laughs> but you realize a lot of fans will pay a lot of money to be like witness me, like you know, to be seen and validated by their <laughs> idol. So you're, you you got that for free. <laughs> yes, I, I have um, B roll of them shopping for M and M's, so it's cute. Great. So Virginia, what's what's your how you hot issue thing? Oh, so it's like a whole mess. I'm not even sure I have it all right, but there's this huge drama with. Uh, no pun intended, because they're all actors. Uh, between Hieri, uh, like from Girls' Day, uh, and I guess her longtime boyfriend, uh, Ryu Jun Yol. And I guess they broke up last year after eight years together. And then Han Sohi, the the actress, uh, she was in like JK, uh, JK's a. Uh, Seven video it and girl bombshell actress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear what role she plays. <laughs> and then, you know, so I guess the announcement that they, that Hiari and Jun Yo broke up happened in like November, but then, then Han So Hee and Jun Yo were like linked together a few days after. And so 
the internet exploded with like speculation of like, oh, was there overlap? <laughs> was there cheating? Was there whatever? So uh, there's been this huge mess. And then I guess Han So he posted like some Instagram story. It was either, I can't remember who did it first, but somebody posted, isn't that inter- or that's so funny or that's so interesting. And then the other woman posted the same thing. And there's all this drama. I, I still can't quite understand the timeline. I've read so many like articles. And so I unwillingly was dragged into this because I have friends who are like very invested. And I'm like, why are we invested? And this whole time, the guy is just silent and doesn't say anything. He said nothing. And so finally, I think- wise. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, true. You no, know, when the man talks also, in these situations. <laughs> yes, it's wise and it's typical. <laughs> Men in these situations never say anything. <laughs> Lay low. <laughs> yeah, they're just on mute. <laughs> so yeah, so like it's been, it's been, I still, I'm sure someone has a better understanding of it, but all I know is it was a mess. I've been unwillingly keeping tabs on it. And I guess today, Harry, bless her PR agent, like did an amazingly petty, but awesome post of like, oh, I'm so sorry. I... She's like apologizing for something she had nothing to do with, right? And like basically makes everyone else look terrible and she just looks like an angel. And it's fantastic PR power move. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, what, what, what did she say? What, what she said the... something like, I apologize for all this drama that, you know, I responded poorly when I saw the, when, even though we broke up before and then I saw the news article come late and dragged up all these feelings and I reacted like a person instead of a professional and yeah. I'm sorry. And it was just really fucking well done. <laughs> oh, it was great. I, yes, it was the whole bit about, you know, I for a minute, like just, I responded as like the person Hetty, not the professional Hetty. Oh. And I, you know, and it's like, I, I didn't, I, I did, I failed to like separate the two, you know, and think about the implications of my action. It was just, oh, great. I, sh- but, I showed a neg- I showed a negative side of myself. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> well, you know, truthfully, that, that's like <laughs> PR pro here. Like that, that's actually what you want because the worst thing you can do is say like, I'm sorry if I made anyone feel like oh. that, that's when you're gaslighting your your audience and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. What people want, especially Americans like Westerners, um, they want you to grow and learn from it. So the most important thing to do, like in an apology statement, is one, like number one thing, and this is like what always gets in the way of like executives and like idols is like their pride. They don't want to actually be sorry. But that's the number one most important thing that you have to do. You have to say, I am sorry for doing this thing. And like once you can do that, and once you can acknowledge and validate what everyone else is saying, you can move on from it. And then you the next part, the next phase is like, and this is what I'm gonna do next. So what I think what was done really well here. It was that, yeah, maybe it's like a backhanded, like, you know, insult, but like it was like, you know, I like everyone, I'm sorry. I showed a moment of weakness. I I did something wrong, and and you know I'm gonna do, do better from it. But like I, I'm sorry. Like this is really unprofessional of me. So that that's the best thing. So you can I do. have a question. Yeah. Uh, Pete for Peter rather. So this is might come off shady, but does doing like a half hour documentary where you vaguely apologize for something? No, 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 no. no. You have not to actually refer to it. Does that work? No, no. Unequivocally, you have to be. Sorry. You cannot be like, I'm sorry if it kind of made you feel this way or some people did this. Like, no, you're, you're putting the blame on other people for having their feelings. Like that, that is the ultimate okay, wrong cool. thing to so do. Like, and it, so like, does it also still count if you do it when like two of your former group members are also promoting? <laughs> Who are we talking about, Joe? <laughs> um, so, uh, well, we'll just say they used to work for Lisa Mon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Probably <laughs> not. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Anything else on this item? Oh, no, not for me. Okay. Let's do Virginia's other item. So Virginia. (laughs) Wait, I have another item? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, because you're the expert on this. So are you Daybuck or not on these friends or FRI? It's friends. Okay. um, (laughs) (laughs) So, yes. (laughs) 
but hmm. it was originally a no. <laughs> but the more I listened, you can't listen to the MV. You have to listen to the Spotify or like the actual song. It's much better on like Spotify or YouTube music or wherever. So once once I heard it on that, I enjoyed it so much more. The MV itself is fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, the thing is, the reason why I was like a little bit of a pause is because the worst, I feel like the worst, and I don't care if I get flamed for this, the worst, worst, worst part of <laughs> ARMY fandom are the solos. And I'm sure that's the case in every fandom, but like, but particularly the solos for the Mangne lines. So V, Jimin, and JK, I hate reacting to their songs because the reaction is always so bad. Unless if you're like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever heard, which mm. is wait, almost wait, 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 never wait. the case. <laughs> yeah. Wait, to clarify, when you say the reactions are so bad, are you saying your reaction to those songs or the, the fandom reaction to your reaction? The fandom reaction to my K-pop reactions. To that. <laughs> because, because like, I'm not going to lie if I wanted to just like scream and go, oh my God. And then like get up and like pound the table and then walk away and then come back and be like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever heard when it's really... In V's case, really bad pop jazz, right? Like, oh. oh, come on. I'm not saying anything no one thought. I mean, that's not, let's, she's been on, Virginia is, if nothing, if not consistent, she's kind of, ever since his album dropped, she's kind of had the same, <laughs> it's boring pop jazz. It's not even like a love, I'm probably butchering her name, but like her type of pop jazz that everybody loves. <laughs> um it's a bit dated. Yeah, no, I, I can take criticism <laughs> on my bias and there's in his solos. Yeah. No, but he kind looks of. good. I, <laughs> hell yeah. No, I, I, See, I agree with yeah. you. And that, so people yeah, it's, get it's, on my it case, just makes right? it hard and almost not worth it to wade in to the comments or discourse on, um, yeah, songs that are like clearly not the same caliber <laughs> as some of the ones we know and love. But yeah, yeah, that that's what it means to be in the fandom. Yeah, and if you don't react to it, then you're an anti, right? So like, of course, if you react to it, you, I mean, so I'm, I'm just like, then why are you watching reaction videos if you don't like the reaction? <laughs> like, if you don't want an actual reaction, because then why that, are you that's watching not this? that's not why people watch reaction videos, Virginia. They watch reaction videos feel validated mm -hmm. for uh, also liking it because they found someone else in another part of the world who feels the same way as they do. They go masturbate like that. No, okay. <laughs> 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 Uh, no. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, but like I I I think it, I, I I share your sentiment, Virginia. I'm I'm just I'm just explaining why you, you asked the question. I'm no, explaining that's why. Yeah. Like, that's why you go to <laughs> discuss. <laughs> yeah, you're outvoted on this one. Yeah. Out there. All right. Fair, fair. So so yeah, so I which I find really particularly ironic because the actual video, right? The video, I don't know if you've all seen it. Uh, I apologize for spoiling it. The first part of the video is V wakes up, he's alone, and then he goes throughout his day and everyone is coupled up. It's actually very LGBTQ friendly. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. very queer friendly. And uh, mm -hmm. like, you know, everyone's like making out and he's just like, Jesus Christ. He's so annoyed. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. The look of frustration on his face. And then he gets hit by a car and he bleeds out from his head. <laughs> and you're like, that's not so cute. All right. So then he wakes up again. But there's a woman with him, of course. Oh, my God. The way V solos, like, through a conniption fit about that. But anyway, I'm sorry. You're never going to have V, okay? I'm sorry to mm. tell you this. Anyway, so he's he's happy and snug with his girlfriend, friend, friend who's more than a friend, That's um, which is what the song is about, right? Um, about wanting to be more than friends because they're already acting like it. Uh, but everyone else is Miss Brol. So every couple that you saw before, they're like yelling at each other. They're screaming at each other. They're mad. And then you think, oh, maybe there'll be a different ending. But still, he gets hit by a car, bleeds out and dies. And everyone still is not paying attention to them. They're still arguing. And then um, 
he he wakes up again next to himself. So I guess the masturbatory comment applies again. But <laughs> <laughs> so what's better than one V in bed, two Vs in bed? Yes. All right. So so you know the whole. I I personally think that the video is talking about like okay. So when there was a whole. If he's alone, if he projects an image of him being alone and miserable, people and other people are happy, he still dies, right? By public opinion, by the car of public opinion or social media or whatever. Uh, but even if he's with someone like, you know, when he is or w- was with Jenny Kim, like <laughs> everybody was mad, uh, but he still got hit by the car, right? Like, so in the end, the only person he really, he has to really worry about is himself, right? He has to love himself. But which I find just so funny, right? Because that's the same situation. I'm not saying I'm V. I'm just saying like, like there's nothing that I can possibly say or do to make people happy other than exactly what they want, right? Which is just so stupid. Like they totally missed the point of the video. They missed the point of the song. And in conclusion, I'm complaining about solo stands, which is so stupid because we know that that's the price of, you know, talking about Mm -hmm. things. But anyway... So that's, I think that's why Peter wanted me to talk about it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure we got that before you had to uh, jump off the episode. But yeah, yeah. Did you, Virginia, did you see the meme going around of like um, V and Jenny and they're like matching like Instagram profiles where it's like both black and white and they're like both at, like shot at the same spot? I mean, it's pretty obvious that they were dating. I don't know if they still are, but I, yeah. I don't know if I saw the meme, but... Yeah, I, I, I well, just just butt hurt K-pop fans, you know. But like, let, this is just a PSA announcement to everybody: you are never going to be Jenny Kim, and you're never going to be Kim Taehyung, and you're never going to date either of them. Okay, so just get over it. <laughs> okay, so is, the comments on this Thank episode you. are going to be dismal. I, like I'm, I'm just preparing myself for that. Yep. <laughs> One star. Yeah, we, we already get it. No, we already get it. like, and that's. I I think we 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 just decided that's our fate. You know, we're gonna we're gonna speak our truth and then like just accept that like you know people are not gonna come into this with like um what what's the word uh carrying out the the main point that we're trying to make, but they're gonna you know uh, obsess over this like one detail that can be mm. you know recontextualizes us like hating an idol and it's like no we don't hate this idol we actually like this idol but we we have this constructive thing to say mm-hmm. um yeah we get a lot of those comments from our podcast which is sorry funny. teresa, teresa <laughs> <laughs> Letting you join, but, so why don't y'all yeah. at me at the mandarin mama on Ooh. twitter oh wow you've been <laughs> oh, out there oh, she said see me. me go ahead but anyway catch me outside is, <laughs> I, yeah, exactly i actually end up liking the song right like i'm uh, I was just like, no, you know, because I actually ended the reaction video uh, because I didn't want to listen to it on Spotify, even though my friend had told me to, because I was like, oh, psh, I don't, I don't need to listen to this again. But then I did listen to it on Spotify. I was like, wait, 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 no, it's actually really good on Spotify. So I came back and like, <laughs> well, there you go. So anyway, so it's it is possible like to change your mind about exactly. something. Yeah. Uh, how, how, okay. Let's do a quick roll call. Um, uh, Teresa, are you day back or not on V's no. friends? Okay, uh, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I haven't. Ja- list- I haven't oh. listened to it on Spotify yet, so kind of reserving judgment. But no, for yeah, now. no for now. <laughs> and Joe, no, it's it's the only V. Unfortunately, is the only solo that I have not connected with. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. I'm 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 debak on just getting this monologue from Virginia. So right? <laughs> mm-hmm. no, that's what I'm taking away from this. <laughs> she going to give it to uh, you every time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let, let me, I think, I don't know. We should probably add a disclaimer somewhere in like every one of our episodes or we should say something at the top where like we reserve the right to change our decision and opinion on something, um, you know, come what may. So like, I, yeah, like don't, don't feel like we hold these views or values or positions forever. Okay. Well, Virginia, you have to jump. Is there anything you want to plug while you... Oh, yes. Um, A certain novel coming out? (laughs) Yes. So I have a K-pop-based novel coming out 
in April, on April 23rd. It's called Elusive, and it's a kind of like a behind the scenes look of the behind, it's set in the K pop industry, uh, but it's more like a behind the scenes look. And it's about a new, like starting over, about healing from trauma and abuse. And of course, there's sexy times because why why not? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to this, and I, I, I hope. My wife reads it at the same time because oh. when she reads romance novels, it, it leads to good things for me. Oh, oh, so. oh. oh what? <laughs> Ooh, oh, gosh. Stop. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Already. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, thank you, Virginia. All right. We'll thank talk you. More later. Bye. Bye. Bye, all. Bye. 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 I'm sweet like candy. Yeah, look, I'm touch. Don't try to get handsy. Yeah, I got cake, baby, I got dough. All right, and we're back after that mini break. Okay, so Joe, what's uh, your how you hot issue thing? So this past couple of months, there's kind of been in the online fan spaces since La Seraphim posted a dark-skinned black model modeling their merch. Um, that started this firestorm in the comments of, we need to keep K-pop Korean and considering what this was posted before the music dropped, that seems a lot more ridiculous after the drop. Um, but also I wanted yeah. to do like a slight rebuttal to <laughs> like both uh, to like the Chio Chicano, Debo, what I call the Control C, K hip hop artists. Um, so like, Part of the reason that these artists make me Negro spiritual side as a fan of Korean hip hop, it's less the artists behaving stupidly. My ire is usually with the small but loud group of fans who have never listened to these genres before. And in the online spaces, particularly like on Reddit, these artists tend to view Korean hip hop and R&B and Asian hip hop and R&B artists as the saviors of hip hop and R&B that can redeem hip hop and R&B from its violent and over-sexualized black and, brown, black and brown roots into something more wholesome. Now, if you know the history of black music in America or black music across the world, this isn't new, but I, for one, would just, I just wish that for once, y'all would be a little bit more honest about your anti-blackness Instead of passing it off as supporting Asia, positive Asian representation, which, by the way, only applies to Asians that meet your criteria, and also passing it off as just Black fans being too serious and getting in the way of your fun. Um, it's wild considering how a lot of these fans talk about mainstream hip hop and R&B being violent and over-sexualized um, when a lot of Korean hip hop artists and Japanese hip hop artists and Chinese hip hop artists also have, um, pardon the expression, but also have bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks type tracks oh, yeah. in their various languages. Um, but for some reason, these artists always get like they still get the option to be wholesome, even though they do and say these things on their tracks. Um, so that's the slight rebuttal. But the answer that I wanted to give to the whole K keep K-pop Korean drivel that we've been hearing is. I do apologize in advance, but we've been here. Thank you. I wanted to shed light on. Tehu in Sunni, or rather in English, Queen Mother in Sunni. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In Sunni. Put some respect on her name. In Sunni, I learned about on the variety show Golden Girls. Golden Girls was a variety show that wrapped earlier this year, and it's older vocalists in K pop. And I see In Sunni, and I'm looking at her, I'm just like, hmm. I'm not sure, <laughs> but she seems like family. <laughs> um, yep. So I do a little research and In Suni or Kim In Soon is known in Korea as the queen of Korean R&B. She's known for her rich and fierce 
throaty alto. Um, she was born to a Korean mother and a Black American serviceman father in 1957. Uh, her parents split up when he decided to move back to the United States. And she was raised in poverty by her mother with support from the Pearl S. Buck Child Sponsorship Program after her father left. Um, she often has recounted the difficulties that she's had to go through of being raised as a mixed child in South Korea. I suggest if you haven't already read Alexander Chi's book, you know, How to Write a Biographical Novel, he does delve a little bit deeper into the treatment of mixed race uh, children in South Korea. So in the 1970s, part of her story is that she was taken in by her big brother, a 19-year-old Black GI by the name of Ronald Lewis. He and his, his friends saw that she was an outcast in her country, and they took her in to their friend group, and they did what they could to take care of her. Um, they, you know, would help feed her and her mother by her clothes. And she, when he has to leave his assignment in South Korea, she gives him a photo album and they're like, when we get older, we'll find each other again. Um, Lewis notes that he was always worried about her because at some point their correspondence dropped off and he was worried about how she would be treated without anybody there. So fast forward in the late 70s, In Suni debuts as a me member of the girl group, the He Sisters. Unfortunately, that group didn't last long and she goes solo. The problem with going with Insuni going solo is she would often get invited because she was becoming more known for her voice. But when she would arrive at uh, television stations to perform, they would say, oh, your hair isn't right. Your skin is too dark. And they would reject her, even though they uh, invited her to come sing on their show. Also. Um, she remembered hearing how people would, when it, if she did end up on television, um, people would change the channel during her segments. In the late 80s, early 90s is when she fi finally hits her stride as an artist and she goes into the <laughs> stratosphere of music stardom in Korea um, with her debut album, Destiny. And since then, she's released about I believe over 40 albums and she's kind of claimed her space in Korean music history. Now, part of me was upset because I didn't necessarily know about her before Golden Girls being a K-pop fan for 10, about 10 years or so. I only knew about Michelle Lee and <laughs> Miss Tasha, but to know that, uh, cause there's also another a male artist who's uh, black and black, Amer a mixed black American and Korean. His name is Park Il Jun, except there's not as much. And he had a pretty big career as well, but it was prior to 1988. So there's not a lot of English facing information on him. But to the fans that say that K pop needs to stay Korean or Japanese media like anime needs to stay Japanese when black fans or uh, or fans that have been considered other are looking for better representations of themselves it's possible one and in other cases we've been around for way longer than you think which leads into my second uh my second point which i'm just calling and forgive the title but i'm calling it blazer's greatest hits <laughs> um <laughs> so when we have these type of conversations and Teresa, I want to give a shout out to Alexis because she kind of touched on this on your last episode about how uh, she, she was talking about international collabs and how we aboos and Korea aboos don't necessarily like those. I read a lot of Asian people that write about black culture and black people that write about Asian culture. And one of the things that they often say is how the reason that these types of fans don't like that kind of uh, they don't want black people to be represented or brown people to be represented in these media spaces is because it messes with their 
fantasy of a pure and polite society that must be protected from all their fantasy of a like a pure society that they don't have in their own country. Uh, specifically, this was like a discussion in terms of anime um, and the reaction of black characters in anime or positive representation of black characters in anime. But I feel like you can put that same uh, explanation and discussion in the K-pop space as well. And in terms of black and Asian collaboration, it actually goes back longer than a century. So uh, yeah, really admire the like the research, the journalism, and this is like your your bread and butter, Joe. And it what what it really comes down to for me, like listening to those fans who say keep K-pop Korean, it's. It, <sighs> That's a translation of like their true feeling, which is like we want to consume and enjoy the essence of black culture, but without, you know, black people, black bodies, without the parts of of blackness that, you know, we were conditioned to hate. Then this is this paradox of you know, wanting to consume and enjoy uh, blackness while also hating it and finding it to be repulsive and inferior um, has been, you know, bedrock of this society since the, not not the beginning of, of human, but be, humankind, but the beginnings of, you know, racial capitalism, slavery, um, all of that. So it, it's, it is, it's really frustrating and, and triggering for me as well as, as a black K-pop fan to see those sentiments, uh, to see those sentiments shared when, as you point out so eloquently, like K-pop and Asian music and what, like it, it has never been purely Korean. It has yeah. never been purely Asian or without black influence, quite the opposite rather. And there's been these beautiful collaborations as well. So really thank you for sharing that, that point and the, the research to back it up as usual. Can I ask one question of you all? Um, do you think K-pop is more accepting of like blackness as an aesthetic? Like, like that's been accepted? Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas like in Western, it, it's more like it's expected to be more of your authentic identity and concept. I think it's it's complicated and it's nuanced. I, mm, I think everything Koreans are doing with the black aesthetic has been done in the U.S. before by non-black people okay, and non by certain black artists as well, capitalizing on aesthetic. Yeah, And it's, yeah. it's also the double edged sword because... We're not like we can't, it's nuanced because we can't also ignore that at least in the last 30, 40 years, black culture and black American culture, because of the military. Yeah. It kind of anywhere the U.S. military is. For the most part, they bring their culture with them. Black culture is one of those things in all of those countries where it becomes the cool American like even since the jazz era, black music mm -hmm. is always the cool thing about America. Black slang is always the cool thing about America. Black style, black fashion, black hair. Yeah, though the way that Koreans were were forced into and and, and still are forced into colonial subjugation yeah. means that whether whether they enjoy it or are conscious and intentional or not, they have to play to the preferences and to the the cultural norms of their their colonizer. Yeah, and, and, and in this case, that's that's the United States. It's, yeah, it's a double edged sword. It's not to say that there isn't ad real admiration and real collaboration going on, but you can't. That's something that we can't. It's you both have to and. It. Yeah. It's both and. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll move us along. Um, I, I had one hot issue. I'll just say that um, I've come around on the barking side. I'm, oh. I'm acceptable pro bark. What made uh, you switch? Um, <laughs> hearing Ive and hearing how they, they wanted to hear the bark. So we'll play a clip. Here's that clip. <laughs> I really wanted to see this ooh ooh reaction. I have heard that you guys do that in Oakland. 
그래서 진짜 오늘 콘서트를 할때 우리 다이브가 뭐뭐뭐 해줄까 하고 엄청 기대를 하면서 왔거든요. So I was really looking forward to seeing if you guys would do it for us today. 근데 우리가 무대 할때 해주는 거예요. And you guys did it for us while we were performing. 그래서 너무 신기하고 너무 재밌었고 진짜 기억에서 안 잊혀질 것 같아요. So it was really cool and fun, and I don't think I'm ever gonna forget it. I'll never forget. So it was just hearing that the idols are, you know, they've been briefed and going into this thing, and then that they're they're looking forward to hearing the bark. And I think the um, <laughs> it, it works in circun- certain circumstances, and it works for Ive. So okay, all right. So let's go into day bark or not. I right, guess day bark or not on. Oh, by the way, day bark or not, you say whether you're you're like half full, half empty on that thing, and however you choose to interpret it. So, are you guys debak or not on Changha's Eeny Meeny? Not. <laughs> not. Yeah, no. So okay. sad. It has potential, but. Any, anyone want to expand on? Yeah, go ahead. It has potential, does not hit the mark of being something that I really want to move to or something I, I will remember. Waiting for the next drop. Yeah, I thought it, I was I was a little disappointed. You know, I like Changha. I also like Hong Jun of ATs. Um, and I don't want to say that I had high expectations because I didn't have any. I didn't expect this as a collab. But the song, I think there's just so much else out there right now, and it, it didn't have lasting power on my playlist, at least as of right now. But maybe I don't know. That'll change. Who knows? Yeah, as a Chung Ha fan, I was disappointed in the entire project. Both of them, they start out, but then they kind of stay on the same level. They don't yep. r- amp up. And not to be dismal about it, but this is not looking too good for more vision. Like outside of their CEO, the offerings have not actually gum is probably the best more vision has put out recently by Jesse. Ooh, and that's that, saying something. That's saying something. Not good. I, I, I thought intro was a good song, but I want like a whole song. Like in the style of intro. Oh, I'm ready. You got your. Or I'm a, ready. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Excuse me. You're it right. is a whole oh, song, yeah. but it feels like it's very repetitive. It's three minutes. It doesn't go anywhere. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's a shame. Yeah. More dream of you, more snapping. Stay more tonight. Stay tonight. Yeah. 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 That, that's what we all want. That's what the Gaysians want. I get requests for those <laughs> songs from other Gaysians. Okay, um, are you guys debuck or not on Wendy's Wish You Hell? Yes. Not. I'm debuck. Oh. <laughs> I'm debuck on yeah. it because I, I'm, I'm always okay. a fan I'm of Dibak like too. a song yeah. that's like cutely, um, like very sweet, but mm, mean. <laughs> I don't know how else I'm like. <laughs> it's just cute. Like, I don't wish you well, I wish you hell. Like, that's a cute line. Yeah, I, I plus what, what Teresa said. It, it, it kind of, it's a cheekiness that you don't often get from K-pop, honestly. Like, it, it's true. like, you know, mm-hmm. they, K-pop would be like, I wish you well. That That's the ex- expectation. Mm-hmm. And then you get this cheekiness from Wendy. Not And then it's got this, like, you know good what, bop. You know, like, I, you know what it yeah, reminds yeah. me of? Like, that viral video of, like, um, I don't know, it was like a fan call or a live. I don't know what it was. I think it was a live. And, like, what they're asking Wendy, like, how does it feel to be 30? And then Wendy's just kind of like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking <laughs> I saw about, that right? As well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the, yeah. the, she, she, her, her face, face just is drops just, she's like, like mm. and then at the end, she's just like, it's just tiring. Like, you just get more tired more easily. Like, I feel like that energy you is need- what she, the, <laughs> yes. was embodied in this music video. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And like, okay, Wendy I see has it. has like dealt with a lot of shit. Like you know, she she had this like major, huge hip mm. issue because mm-hmm. some vendor did not set up their stage properly and she fell off, yep. and like completely damaged her body like in her career because of it. And like, I I want her revenge story. And this yes. is part of it. I am here for it, Wendy, all the way. And also those. <laughs> A stacked vocal arrangement is like a Colt 45. It does it every time. 
<laughs> That's a great metaphor. All right. Are you guys day black or not on Yuwa's rooftop? I'm not. Is this the Fern Gully and the Forest g- Girl? Like she did that song, Bon I, I Voyage, even, where she I, had I'm red hair and fleck, freckles and uh, semi-native appropriated imagery. Oh, yeah. well, she I think a, it is. She a baddie oh, yeah, in this you're right. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's oh, wow. Her. What a yeah. transformation. She, she a baddie Ow. in this one. I mean. Yeah, wow. No for the song. Yeah, that's what, yes. <laughs> no for, yeah, yeah. This this one was Daybok. I enjoyed it. Yeah, not for the song, Daybok for the performance. That video. For the her, performance. Her, her dance, the dance, I didn't even realize. I'm just like, where is my 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 young Yua? Who was singing closer? <laughs> like it was like yeah. If the song was different, it would just be out the park for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Tibak all around. I think the song's good. All right. Um, oh, Teresa, do you want to? Did you say if you're a Tibak or not? I'm not. But I don't really have much to add. Like that's, <laughs> we that's cool. Keep going. This is not a good song. Yeah, just a feeling. It. Okay, are you Tibak or not? On highlights, body. Tibak. I'm going to say not for now. I'll give it a few more listens. Mm. Did not I, grab me. I like, I like a light song. Tebak. Tebak light. Yeah, I guess I'll, <laughs> I'll be Tebak, yeah. All right. Are you guys Tebak or not on Zyker's We Do? Or excuse me, We Don't Stop. <laughs> we uh, Don't Stop. <laughs> we, we Do Stop would be so lame. We Don't Stop. Are you guys Tebak or not? Mm, not. Potentially? Uh, I don't know. I don't have strong feelings either way, to be honest, on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not on it. It's like if you asked uh, a generative AI model to create yes. a boy group, Banger Clanger. Like, this yes. is the most, like, commoditized version of that. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I can see it growing on me, though. Like, I'm not yeah. hating it, but it's not it's just, innovative. It's not, I have no mm-hmm. strong reaction to it. And I feel like that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's like... Is it, I don't I know, just, like, mm. am I really enjoying it? Do I see myself adding it to a playlist? No. But if it comes on, <laughs> no. <laughs> will I automatically skip it? No. It might grow on me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joe? As, as somebody who's not really big on the Banger Clinger sound anyway, I prefer their debut to this. So nah, not for me. All right. And, and it, I was yeah. thinking that as well, that their debut was more innovative. And now already they're just barely out. They're already like slumping towards kind of boring stuff. I have not gotten requests for Zykers lately. I did Ouch. for their first yeah. debut song, but not lately. Right. Okay. Are you guys day back or not on um, the boys, the boys, the boys, the boys, the boys? Uh, <laughs> Nectar. <laughs> day back. I'm day back. I think that it's, it's, it's like sweet. It's cute. I don't know. I like, I'm yeah, very much I'm into mildly. the sweet sounding boy group songs lately. So, yeah. Oh, why not? Yeah, I have to be in the mood for it. I'd say mildly Daybot. It is sweet. Yeah. It's, 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 one of, it's one of the better sweet boy group tracks because there was a lot that are just throwaways. But this one, okay, they put a little effort into this one. All right. Yeah, I guess I'm not, um, just because it feels like commoditized boy egg yo to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Joe, did you say for Daybok or not on that yeah, one? Yeah, I said, I said Daybok, but that's just because All I'm right. a boys fan, boy stan. All right. Are you guys Daybok or not on Nomad's California Love? Daybok. Not like the uh, <laughs> Tupac song. California Love. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally expecting that. I'm a Daybok on this. I like that sound. I, I like the whole album. That, More yeah, Nomad. Yeah. That that I knew when they dropped their pre-release, they were gonna be my group. <laughs> and so far, it's holding up. The credits that they have on this album, one, how did y'all get there that quickly? And the sound, that classic 2000s R and B, you can't go wrong with it. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna say I'm I'm not Debak. But great. I, I feel like, you know, I, I maybe I'm just I was not in the mood when I listened to this. So I will That's I will totally go back possible. and you know, just based off of your two dead box already, like I'll give it another try on another day. 
You should watch mm. the video too. Yeah, the video is what did it for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, uh, I am Daybok on Santa Monica, and Venice Beach, yeah. and uh, West Side nostalgia. Yeah, and I and I think I want to say maybe Chatsworth even. You know- <laughs> <laughs> where they filmed this I want to yeah. guess but yeah yeah maybe that's why I don't I don't I'm not I mean I'm an LA girl through and through and anytime you start talking uh. about like Santa Monica I'm like we're not talking about LA so what are we talking about here so uh. like yeah oh, it's, it's like, like that, that. <laughs> all right all right I got you anyway I'll give it another shot Wow, see, I'll give I, it another I, I'm, shot. I'm, like Teresa's making me realize, like I'm the tourist of of, uh, of LA. But okay, are you guys <laughs> Tabak or not on Jennifer Lopez in her song with G Idol? I really, Noja Idol. I really this thought that when you said that sound like you were asking, are we Tabak or not on Jennifer Lopez? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> So like, I mean, she's getting dragged on TikTok with this like movie yeah, that came out yeah. or whatever. Oh gosh, what, that's a whole wait, issue. Yeah. Wait, really quick, what what is that issue? What what, what is that? She dropped. Has anyone watched for, the movie? She dropped a movie on Amazon Prime for her new. She's trying to follow in the rain, vein of Beyonce and others, doing a audio visual like a film of the movie or mm-hmm. yeah, a film of the album. Um, and everybody said, "Girl, you doing too much." <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. I haven't seen it, but I saw like a clip going around of her um and her team trying to get other people, other celebrities on board and just like everybody was booked and busy, not available. <laughs> like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, oh. I can't help you out this time. And it's so funny cuz like you see her face like changing and she's just like, "No, I mean, I I do that also. I'm paraphrasing here, but you know, she says something to the effect of like, you know, I do that also. Like when when I don't want to say no to somebody that I like, like I just I say that I have other projects, you know, and it's a scheduling <laughs> issue. And it's just like, yeah, girl, your friends are not are not down for this because it's a crazy like, ass. Trying to polite you let you what down. are you like, doing? Yeah. But anyway, sorry, the song. It, yeah. This time around with G Idol. The song is great. <laughs> To me, the song is so, great. So, it's a day back. Uh, Joe, are you, de- are you... Okay, you're day back. Okay. So you guys are all not... Yeah. So I know, I'm day back Yeah, I'm day back on the song. The, the movie, the, whatever J-Lo's the doing on the side right now. Right. It's for comedy I know. purposes, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I would never say anything negative about my employer uh, in a public place. So uh, the, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm Tabak on uh, G Idol, uh, Yoja Idol, getting Korean more more mainstream and normalized and uh, East meets West collabs like this. Okay. Are you guys Tabak or not on a track CEO has been cleared of all, uh, being cleared of charges on the case filed by former 5050 members? Not, but the fix was kind of in on that. <laughs> yeah, not, I guess. I, I don't, this raises more questions. Yeah. I, I don't see how anyone could be Tabak yeah, on it. It's just sad all around. Okay. Are you guys Tabak or not on BTS's J Hope, reflecting on his past and future in the new trailer for the docuseries Hope on the Street? Uh I'm mildly Tabak just because I do enjoy watching um I like that this is called a docuseries. <laughs> um because I mm-hmm. have it's like a sticky, like it's like a sore point for me um, as a journalist to see every artist really seeing like documentaries, you know, and it's like, they're not true documentaries. You know, it's something that has been carefully construed by their team that, you know, I don't know. It's just like, I also really respect documentaries and I just feel like more broadly, it's not a K-pop only thing. I think it's like a music industry thing wide where we just have artists releasing these exclusive, you know, documentaries or docuseries that are supposed to be really intimate behind the scenes looks at the artist, but they're not. Or something, or something like that. Like, say, yeah. profound, like, you know, on the nature of the industry or, not, or something like it's art not, itself. You know, yeah. it's just, it's more. It's just fan exactly. service. And I, I'm okay. And PR. And I'm okay only. if it's mm-hmm. fan service, like, but let's just be, you know, clear about like what it is. Let's be real about what it is. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, I could get be Daybok for the reasons why Teresa said it's it's potentially Daybok. How about you, Joe, Stephanie? Duh, I'm gonna say not because, like, didn't we get that already? Not to be, I'm but there's not, always more, always more, Joe. Is there? Because, mm, like, I was cool with him. Like, maybe I kind of checked out once he met his idol. Like, once he met J Cole, I was good. Like. You know, as a fan, as a J. Cole fan and a J. Hope fan, but I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't really need much more than this. I'm satisfied. Stephanie? I'm a nod. I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Moving along. Are you guys day black or not on phoneless concerts? Wait, am I saying that right? Yeah. Phoneless. Um, yeah. So connected entertainment. Not boneless. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Go um, ahead. Yeah, we needed Virginia for that comment. Um, so, all right. So, uh, connected, like with a T apostrophe D entertainment, uh, said that they're all about creating a truly immersive experience with our events. That's why we're partnering with our company that, that understands this idea. So, say goodbye to phone distractions and hello to genuine connections and unforgettable memories. So, uh, it looks like they're doing like, you know, uh, phoneless experiences at their at their concerts and whatnot. So Daybuck or none of that. Daybuck and to fill in for Virginia and the boneless comment, like connected is all about curating experiences. They've also been really pushing for 21 and up K-pop nights. Like unfortunately yes. I, I didn't yes. know but this past weekend in Chicago they had a white night, grown and sexy K-pop get down. And I Ooh. just, I found out about what? it after all the tickets were sold out. And I was mad because uh. I'm like, I'm trying to back it up on somebody to Red Velvet's Automatic. Right. Um, right. And oh, wow. Also, you don't need, I like the phoneless concerts because you don't need to see what we're getting into. We grown. Mm-hmm. We're, we're making consenting. And I need to make that. We're making consenting <laughs> decisions. That's when we go to quick. these events. <laughs> so Daybok. Yeah, I'm Daybok for it. I think it'll be cool. Um, it reminds me of a convo that Alexis and I had on, on It's a K-pop thing at one point where she was talking about how, um, you know, well, obviously we're biased here, but at GOT7 concerts, you know, like the goal was to get the, the artist to interact with you in real time rather than like the goal being you getting close enough to just get like a better fan cam. You know, mm. so if we can have more of like, hey, let's make it an interactive experience, you know, where you're really present. And also like when I was at the Twice concert this weekend, I myself at one point got mad at myself and was like, girl, put your phone. Yeah, like, like put you your phone this? away. Like, because yeah. I was annoyed. I was like, ah, oh, the lighting, I can't get it right on my video. Mm. What's wrong? And then I found mm-hmm. myself being taken out of the experience. And then I was like, why am I doing this? Like, just stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I am, I'm so tip back on, on everything about this. Like the 21 and up focus, like Joe, you, you saying that they did this event means I'm actually going to reach out to them, see if we can partner with them on, on oh some God. other events that we're throwing. Um, yes. but like, you know, like one recognizing that as like an age group and like a block and an experience and a style that is categorically distinct from the random dance game, which I, I hate mm-hmm. with a passion, but I'll still do because mm-hmm. I, I need to, get gigs but like you know like I, I just hate that aspect of like trying to be seen and like at internet points um, yeah also yeah. like I, I uh, you know Tebok on um, wearing comfy shoes and wearing ear protection and bringing binoculars to K-pop concerts and not recording because that's what we did <laughs> <laughs> binoculars I remember that yeah okay yeah I think all, all of us on this call remember a time without cell phones right like and so th- this this line that's like get ready to engage with the music like like never before I'm like you mean like a few years ago when we didn't have phones right right <laughs> yeah course. like listen like many engage of us remember deliberately right right, right. Yeah. unfortunately yeah. looking with our eyes <laughs> yeah unfortunately being like, in really the mid- like never oh, sorry. Before. go ahead unfortunately being in the Midwest I grew- remember a time with no K-pop events period. I wasn't spoiled like y'all were. Um, oh, yeah, like Ellie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Are you guys Dibok or not on Dean falling off the stage, just showing his impeccable ability to maintain his balance and then probably falling off the universe for like another decade? Not Dibok on no. him falling off the universe for another decade. <laughs> he's going to disappear. No, yeah, like no. literally he's going to disappear now. Yeah, right? Like this is the yeah, that's what happened he last falls, time. Yeah, fall down the stairs. And no, then don't give him any ideas. Don't hear from him. I okay, for one, sorry. I for one think this is a social media ploy that he knows <laughs> about all the jokes, and he just did that to get recorded. Really, That's I, I think, think. It, I, I think it was a, a genuine accident, and <laughs> I think we're just finding humor in this happening again. Uh, perhaps. I don't know. I'm Daybuck on the laws. Yeah. Are you guys Daybuck or not on IU selling out her tour? Yes, completely. No, because yes, I don't have any box. tickets. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there about because I'm there about because some of y'all were some of y'all were wondering, eh, can she do it? And I said, absolutely, she can. Yeah, absolutely. never a doubt. Never a doubt. Mm-hmm. Iconic, Tebak. Yeah. Okay, Tebak on Taylor Swift of Korea. All right, are you Tebak or not on Hwasa's fandom name, Twits? So hold on, a, a, I rem- so the fan. song it's she Sorry. pronounces it like to it, hmm. to it, yeah, to it, to it, to it, because they don't ha- they ha- they yeah. don't yeah, have the, the two w. Yeah. Um, so I think it's yeah. kind of cute. Yeah, to it. yeah. <laughs> but if you just read it, it does sound ridiculous. <laughs> it, I'm also surprised I mean, it took yeah, her. Who who was consulted on this? It's like so who, late. Where? I don't know. It just it's surprising to me that it took them this long and then they went back to the first song. I'm I'm back on it being ironically funny. Mm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, mm. if, yeah, especially if it's intentional and she gets it. No, like, no, I like it because it's unintentional. Oh, <laughs> I love Hwasa. I'm not back right. on the name. As a Wano fan, yeah. no, no fandom name can embarrass me more than my own fandom name. And like, so Hwasa, as a Wasa fan, I'll just take it. <laughs> Okay. What's the Wano fandom name? It's Winnie. It's pronounced Winnie, but it's spelled W E N E E. No. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Wano again and his like sexy uh, ab window outfit. Just like his booty, you know, the everything. Of, so I need time of Korea to return. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you guys tip? Oh, I'm going to get us in trouble for this. Are you guys Daybook or not on KCON issuing a media alert that they're opening the door for press pass applications now? Which to me felt like ultimate access journalism. (laughs) Yep. As a PR professional, (laughs) it strikes me as being like ultimate access journalism. But anyway, what do you guys think? I think you need to explain that, like for people who don't Mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Mm hmm. It it is it strikes me as like audacious and ridiculous that KCON here here I'm gonna put him on blast. Let me find the email. Oh my god. Uh oh. Don't get us in trouble. Get us blacklisted Any from this. KCON staff turn off the episode now if you're listening. Uh okay, so let's see. Who who did this? The agency for KCON. Um they issued a press release just saying like uh oh, we've got KCON this year, but um, along with that media alert, they've got a very distinct call to action for applications for press credentials are open now um, for, for you know, this period. Click on this link to apply, which strikes me as like press is no longer press. It's like a way of getting prioritized like fandom experiences. Like that's how it comes off to mm. me. Mm-hmm. Like you know how you pay extra more for like a VIP experience. Like yeah. Oh well, let me reward you, KCOM, with my list, like with my following and clout and editorialized coverage that you were that you want in exchange for a press pass, and let me be legitimized uh, by having this coveted press pass. Like that, but that's not that's not what journalism or PR is about. Out like uh, I, I say that as a PR pro, like I I I just found it distasteful personally. I mean, I feel like they've been doing this though, and it's yeah, but yeah. but it's like maybe extremely overt. <laughs> yeah, now that they're it's just tough. out with it instead of yeah. you know under wraps. And also, since if you're announcing it, I feel like I fear 
as a journalist that that's going to get abused by fans who think that they're going to get a little bit more like yeah. announcing it in this way. Yeah, it's not like it's not like you're doing this for the sake of getting a story. You're doing it for the sake of let me reward um, influencers rather than journalism. If mm-hmm. that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. I see that. Um, well, they, they're they're following the times, the trends. Listen, I definitely when where the I money definitely is. remember being at KCon last year, and to be clear, you know, um, we, you know, Alexis did get press. Um, so we did have, you know, seats and she got press. Um, I did not. Um, I got tickets in a, a different way, but I do remember being seated. And then literally I was next to the guy who runs security for like London's, whatever. KCON was basically, there was a festival that they were trying to organize in London. It fell through, whatever. So the guy was there doing research. And then I'm sitting with him there and the entire like two rows in front of us were empty. And then at some point, like this like group of TikTokers just like comes down and I recognize some of them and they all fill up the seats. And he's like, oh, who are these people? And I was like, oh, they're all, I I recognize a few TikTokers. And if they're not all TikTokers, it's TikTokers and their friends. <laughs> You know, um, mm-hmm. and I just, I don't know. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I say that all as I'm like, I'm starting our influencer program at Amazon, but uh, uh, anyway, uh-huh. that, is, <laughs> that aside, are you guys, oh wait. All right, so did we say it for day or not? It sounds like we're all not on not. it. Yeah. yeah. Not. Okay. Are you, are you day or not? I love this last item. Uh, on Oakland, uh, an Oakland billboard. <laughs> Accidentally putting on their billboard a little bit early um, that uh, TXT is going on tour and, and is, by the way, um, also uh, giving a concert at Oakland Coliseum. Was that confirmed as like true? It, it was wow. confirmed. Yeah, Virginia posted it in the. Somebody <laughs> did it. Virginia posted it in the Slack. The calendar, right? <laughs> like, or like, Oh, yeah. someone was Somebody fired, was fired really for big trouble. Trouble. Big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or I'm putting it up too early. Interesting. But I mean, shout out to Oakland for getting to jump on the game. <laughs> yes, Oakland. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm Oakland I'm, stand I'm, up. Yeah. By the way, we I posted that at the start of our episode recording um, in our Bay Area K-pop Facebook group. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm I'm really excited to see uh Oakland getting prioritized. <laughs> Mm, for once, yeah. right? Like not driving down to LA, man. Teresa driving down to your neighborhood, um, but like, yeah, like we're 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 happy about this here in the Bay Area. So I, I guess I don't um, know. I think it, it's funny, and I'm I'm Tay Black on more Oakland stops. I'm, I'm Tay Black on stops. just more stops in general because I'm I'm really tired of these uh, concert ticket prices being as high as they are because mm-hmm. they're not having as many tour stops and they. They're doing the whole, we're just going to do stadiums. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you don't want to compete with all those NorCal Absolutely kids coming down not. To, to your turf, right? No, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tabak. All right. All right, that wraps it up. So let's let, let our listeners know where we can find you on socials and whatnot. So Joe, you're first. So you can find me at Journalistic Joe on Instagram. You can catch me this weekend at Asian Arts Initiative in Philly, uh, where I will be part of a writing cohort. I am covering the artist Victoria Shin, and she is going to be in uh, holding a concert. Tickets are twenty dollars, and I believe the concert starts at eight uh, eight o'clock on Saturday. And she's also going to have a talk earlier that day and Friday with the music writer Mindy Su on cyber feminism. Um, so come out. I think it'll be a great time. All right, Teresa, what, what's your what's your hit? What what is where can people buy your book and stuff? my book? Wow, you, you're making me an author right now. <laughs> well, subscribe to your podcast. Let, let's let's All go, right, Teresa. everybody. So you can hear more of my music and pop culture ramblings on the podcast. It's a K-pop thing, which I co-host with Alexis. And as for socials, I'm exclusively on Instagram because I can only handle one platform at a time. <laughs> it's at it's I K P T pod P O D. And uh, yeah, that's the Instagram account for it's a K-pop thing. 
Your, your like IG promotion game is like top notch. It, Thank it is you. really good. I, I like Appreciate how you it. do it. Yeah. Looking for an yeah, editor. Yeah, we're, we're Well, you you should tap the, this guy that we work with at, at the <laughs> podcast. So, <laughs> Stephanie, last word. Um, you can find me on Instagram at catchlight27. And what about you, Peter Lowe? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, follow me on DJ on Instagram, all the things at DJ Peter Lowe. I'll see you at the next K-pop party. Oh, if I can plug one thing on April 20th, that's that's 420 on the calendar. 420. For, for those of you keeping uh, track, we're going to throw a K-pop high con- uh, event what? where we're playing songs like CL's Lifted and EXO's Coco Bop and whatnot. Oh, wow. Um, and other K-pop high school themed concepts. What were you thinking? What? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. Nothing auspicious about the April 20th date. Okay. All right. I'll see you all there, and we'll catch you all in the K-pop cast slack. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. everyone.